Sydney Flanagan is the star of the new film Never Rarely, Sometimes, Always, playing a teenager who is looking to get an abortion. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Sydney. And to start, this is your film debut, which is kind of astonishing for a lot of people who have seen the film. Uh, can you walk me through just the initial discussions you had with Eliza Hittman, the, the director, and just what inspired you to sign on for the film? Right, yeah. So I remember, you know, her partner Scott reaching out to me on like via email when I was 20 and just like telling me that Eliza was working on this film and that, you know, I would, they were interested in having me audition. And at first I was, you know, it was really surprising to get that email and like from these people that I very vaguely remember meeting when I was 14. And, um, you know, at first I was just, I immediately was like, oh, I don't think I can do something like that. Like, I don't think I, I was like, oh, I don't have the time or like, I'm just, I've never acted. And so like, I was just kind of like, no, at first. And then um, Scott at some point was like, you know, like maybe, you know, like you're a performer and it's something you could probably do. And maybe you just like talk to Eliza and, you know, just at least talk to her about the script and everything. So I had like a Skype meeting with her and she kind of told me about like, you know, the basis of the story and we just like chatted and she sent me the script and I read it and I was like, oh, this is actually like a really cool story. It's, you know, about abortion and women's rights and, you know, and all the characters seem so real. And um, I was just like really inspired by the story and I watched her other movies and I just really liked them. And it felt like something worth giving a chance. Yeah. Um, what, I, what I really found interesting about your character of Autumn is that she isn't really a stereotype, you know, and she really feels like a three-dimensional human being, which we don't always see from teenage characters typically. Um, and I talked with Eliza the other day and she mentioned that you really just understood this character kind of on a fundamental level. Um, so, I mean, how would you describe Autumn in your own words? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I think she's someone who's like, you know, um, that is headstrong and, um, you know, like maybe a little anxious. I think she tends to like, you know, suffer silently sometimes and to try and, you know, handle everything on her own. But, you know, she's, um, it was, I think it was very brave of her to like, you know, to just like, go and take that journey, you know, and to reclaim her own body that way. Well, and you're also a musician and that's something that's reflected in the film where we see her performing at the beginning and then at another point at the karaoke bar. Uh, did you have any involvement with just the inclusion of those more musical moments as far as when she, like what she sang or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, Eliza definitely let me um, be part of the process of picking out those songs. Um, like we had like some options to work with and like I went over the options and like um, the first one I just remember being really drawn to because I felt like, you know, like it's originally like sort of this more like doo-wop style type of songs, but the lyrics were just like so haunting to me. And I thought that, you know, they just worked really well for sort of like the theme. And um, and then that second song, like when I was going, I had like three songs we listened to and that one was actually a song that like had a very um, like deep emotional connection to my personal self when I was like in high school. And so it just like, when it came up as an option, I was just like, it has to be that one. <laughs> Great, yeah. And also a lot of your screen time is with Talia Ryder, who plays Autumn's cousin, and she joins her on the trip. How did the two of you uh, develop that dynamic that you have? Because it feels like the two of you almost had like a shorthand in how you communicated with each other. Right. Um, I had the writing problem. Um, like, you know, sort of question you know, wrote in them in our own time and shared our answers with each other privately. And, uh, and like, it just, it just really helped us like immediately develop this connection, like understanding each other's backgrounds and histories as like people and as women. And that really helped like 
very much in the very beginning. And then like over time, just all the time we spent together on set and also off set, like we just really bonded. And I just really did feel close to her. And um, I really came to love her as a person and a friend. Yeah. Well, um, you have all this pre-production experience with Eliza. And once you get to set and you're actually filming the movie, what was she like to work with as a director in that mode as far as collaborating with you? Yeah, I mean, like I even remember like my first day on set, we were shooting on a bus and I remember just like sitting on the bus, like I think I was like by myself and I saw like a bunch of the crew and stuff like in this circle, like talking and like they were getting ready for like, you know, the big first day. And I remember just thinking to myself, oh my God, this is actually happening. Like we're about to actually start doing the real thing. And I was so scared, but there's also this feeling of like, I don't know, just kind of like when you're sitting on a roller coaster and it's like, oh God, here we go. And um, Eliza just like made it so like, it, I don't know, just something about like, I felt like connected to her in some weird way, especially since like we met when I was younger and it, it just, there was like this weird feeling of like, I don't know I just trusted her felt confident in her ability to make this film because of like her other films I felt just so I don't know like I just felt safe on set and I felt I always trusted her direction and I you know had small conversations with her and I'd always ask questions and she was always happy to help and um, she was really great at directing like small moments and just kind of being there and I just it was I mean it was really like just an awesome time getting to work with someone like her. Yeah, well, I have to say the frankness of some of the scenes in this movie where, you know, Autumn is talking to social workers and doctors are quite illuminating. And I don't think it's something that men experience as much as women, you know? And I mean, you don't have to delve into anything too personal, obviously, but I'm just curious how much those scenes felt familiar to you and whether the authenticity of those scenes actually maybe even helped you in your performance at all yeah I mean like definitely you know I it wasn't my first time in a Planned Parenthood they provide lots of excellent care for women you know besides just abortions and um you know it did feel very routine and I mean Planned Parenthood was also very involved in like helping I mean, we filmed in actual Planned Parenthoods and they were very involved in helping us develop those scenes. And um, yeah, it all felt authentic and it felt just kind of like sometimes when I was doing those scenes, I would just like go through it as if like, okay, I'm at the doctor's right now and like, just kind of go through it the way I normally would. Yeah, well, I'm really curious about the scene that, that gives the film its name and people who have seen the film obviously know what I'm talking about. Um, it's so raw and emotional and it's filmed all in one take. And Eliza was telling me that was actually the first take, which is just incredible. Um, what was that day like on set from your perspective? Right. Um, I remember getting on set and Eliza had like, um, we were in a Planned Parenthood and she had arranged for me to have like a private room to sit in, it was like an office so that I can, you know, kind of be away from all of the chaos that is the set, you know, and all the commotion. And I, I sat there eating like, eating like a little bowl of fruit for my breakfast and sitting with my sides and just sitting with my feelings and just reflecting and um, just trying to like kind of get in touch with like, you know, those, those more vulnerable places and memories that, you know, we all kind of, that are all stored in there from years of experiences and um you know and then we we went and she came in and had like a brief conversation with me we kind of like ran the sides a little bit and then we started to shoot the scene and you know there were like two cameras on like very close on me and you know it always and like when you have like cameras like like all up in your face it does really help you feel vulnerable and um the social worker just like had like really just had like a sense of like it just felt like true compassion like because she and it probably has a lot to do with the fact that she really did that work for so long and I don't know I just felt so comfortable and I felt like I was you know connected to my own experiences as a woman and like the things I've been through and it just I don't know it was almost like sitting through my own therapy session and it was nice in a way like I felt 
it felt powerful to like be that vulnerable in front of a room of people. And I mean, once you're done filming, did it feel like the experience of playing Autumn was just still lingering with you? Has it still lingered with you ever since you've been done for however many months? Yeah, I definitely remember like when I came home, it was it was definitely still there for a little while. Um, it was like, cause like, I don't know, like putting yourself in a specific mindset, especially with a film where like the entire thing is kind of anxiety and she's always like, you know, trying to get through this thing and like is taking all these hurdles and hoops and like she's just she just wants to get it done and then like you are in that mindset for like you know a couple months and then you go back home to your life and you know so like you have to kind of work your way back out of it but it, I, I remember like first coming back to my house and just being like it was like almost unrecognizable you know like all the furniture had been rearranged and stuff too it freaked me out <laughs> um but yeah it it was it was strange, but it was interesting. And, um, you know, I'd do it again. Yeah. Well, have you given any thought to just what happens to Autumn after she gets home and, you know, kind of gets back into, into her regular life? Yeah. I've never given any deep thought to it really. I, Hmm. I just hope for the best. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, I think this film has affected a lot of people who have seen it. Uh, what kind of response have you received yourself from, you know, younger people who have seen the film? Yeah, I mean, I've really only mostly seen like really warm support. I've seen people, you know, be very empathetic towards like, you know, the fact that so many women have to deal with this and I've had women DM me and say like, you know, oh, this like, this means so much to me or just tell me their own personal experiences. And it's just so, it's so amazing to see people like, just like open up to me like that. And, um, you know, it's, it's sad that it's such a universal story, but, you know, I think that's why it needs to be told. Yeah, absolutely. And you and Eliza are earning nominations and wins from these all these critics groups for your work. Um, what has your reaction been to getting all of this love from the critics? It's like overwhelming, but like in the best way. It's I I really never thought that I would ever be experiencing something like this in my life. I mean, I never thought I'd be in a movie or be acting or that's the thing is that, you know, life is just so surprising. Like you can really never predict where you're going. It's just, um, I, I'm just, it's amazing. It's one of those things that are really hard to describe. I bet, yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you have anything lined up right now as far as other films, but do you see yourself pursuing acting full-time after this? Yeah, I mean, I, I already did grab another role with a film called My Twin is Dead. And I'm not sure when we're supposed to start shooting yet because COVID is a bit of a thing. And um, so just kind of waiting right now and preparing. And uh, yeah, I pretty much my, right now, my plans are to keep working on acting as well as, well as my music because I play with my band as well here in Buffalo, New York. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's mainly the goal. But as I've learned with working on Never Rarely, I have no idea what is coming for me. And um, I just I just hope it's exciting. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's better that way. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, Sydney, for talking to me today. And congrats on this incredible performance and all the nominations you've received. Yeah, thank you like so much. Yeah. And uh, for those of you watching, hit like and subscribe for more interviews just like this and head to goldderby.com to make your award show predictions. 